All right, welcome back. This is the final video in the Weebly ePortfolio tutorial series. And in this video, we are basically going to just take a moment to visit the ePortfolio to verify that we have created it correctly, that the media is where we want it to be, that the media is working and you can view it and things work as you expect them to be. Um, basically, uh, it, it, it's really it, it's it's really unfortunate how often students overlook or or just don't take the time to actually look at what they've made and to verify that it is uh, you know correct. I would suggest pretending like you are the employer and you are looking at this e-portfolio and is it something that. Uh, you feel is a good uh, e-portfolio or is it something that is clunky and doesn't work correctly and uh, you know just look at it from the perspective of you being in the the employer and hopefully you are happy with what you are looking at but to do that what I would recommend is we basically just go down the line and look at each page and verify it so I'm going to go over into my e-portfolio where it's live on the web and I'm on the home page and that's looking pretty good. It's got my name, Kenneth Wilson, that big title, Welcome to My ePortfolio, and an image of myself. So nothing, uh, nothing wrong with that. So let's go look at the About Me page. And again, here we have the uh, link that we created. And I just added some Lauren Ipsum into the page for just filler, so visually. But you would probably have you know a description about yourself and your academic background and your career goals and whatever else you see fit for an about me page and that looks pretty good I've got nothing to complain about there um, one thing I will point out though real quickly is um, th this this tag or this uh, tagline or whatever they call it that's highlighted here on your home page if, if I come over into my editor and I take a look at my About Me page, I get this uh, um, click to add headline here. And, and, if, and, and as long as it says click to add headline, you don't see anything live on the page. And I recommend that on the rest of the pages you leave it alone and don't add anything. It's really – the functionality of it really is – kind of weird and I can't quite figure it out because once you seem to change it on any other page it seems to change it on, on all the other ones and you can't have an individual headline for each different page it just doesn't seem like or at least I haven't been able to figure out how to do that so I just leave it as the default click to add headline so that when I'm looking at it live on the web there's just nothing there and I would recommend you do that uh, as well because I think it, you, you'll probably most likely be like me and as soon as you start messing around with it, it starts to act funky and not behave the way you expect it. So let's forget about it. Anyways, the About Me page, it looks pretty good. I've got my text, I've got my link that opens up in a new tab and everything seems good on that. Let's take a look at the resume page. And it is like I expected. It is that Microsoft Word resume that I uploaded into, or actually that I embedded into the page using the document element. And the functionality seems to be working. I can click on it and see it in full screen. I can exit out of it. So all is looking pretty good there. Let's move on to the next page, student page. Well, wait a second there's nothing at all on this page well why is that well because we didn't add anything and when we were creating our pages and when we were making our menu in that previous video we created this filler page student work so that we could uh, have these subcategories or we could have these pages as sub pages to this so that our menu would look like this but as we can see uh, that doesn't do anything, doesn't add anything, and that can be kind of misleading uh, to the viewer, or they could come and they could be like, well, wait a second, something's wrong with the ePortfolio, there's nothing on this page. So in order to avoid that, 
I would recommend that you add, you know, something into this page, whether it be some, you know, sample uh, images of each type of work. And at the very least, at, you're going to want, you know, just a brief description saying, you know, this is, please view, please view the subcategories to see specific types of work that I have created. You know, thank you for taking the time to look at my work, something like that. So let's go in um, to that page. And actually, first, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of this Lauren Ipsum. And now I'm going to come into that student work page. And I'm going to add in some text. And I'm going to be specific and say, please visit the sub pages in the menu to see specific types of work and then maybe that Lauren Ipsum uh, I don't know why that is it on top there but um, you know maybe I would have some sort of description like you know I am interested in uh, video editing and photography I've done a lot of work with that I have also done a lot of newspaper articles etc and then spe specifically say, you know, visit those sub pages to see those specific. And again, the only reason why I'm, I'm really worried about this is so if uh, a potential employer is moving his way through these pages and he gets to this page, that there is at least something there and it's not just a blank page. And it reminds them or it points out to them that you can, you know, see the work by coming to these subcategory pages. So we've done that. So let's take a look. Photography. Yep, there's our images. It seems to be working correctly. And again, you hopefully took the time to uh, organize this, adding, you know, descriptions of the work and and having uh, titles for the different uh, categories if you've got you know different types of pho f photographs on there you've taken the time to do that so photography page looks pretty good the writing page uh, there's our sample PDF and it seems to be working correctly and that's looking good again even though this is writing you'll want to add some text uh, describing the type of work and what it was for and that kind of stuff that looks good video page there's the videos there's my uh, you know title and description and here's the video and it seems to be working and it full screens and I can exit out of it and pause it and so that seems to be working correctly that looks good and finally contact page and hey wait a second again we've come to a page that has nothing on it even though contact page was a default page created by Weebly you still need to add something to it so I'm gonna come back into the editor and I'm gonna come to my contact page and there's nothing there so I'm gonna look through these elements and wouldn't you know it there happens to be an element called contact me and I just have to see if I can find it contact form there we go contact form and I'm gonna drag that content contact form down into my page and it is a default contact me name email and comment and you can click on it and you can change some options here make sure that the email is being sent to you and you have a number of different things that you can change or play around but the, the default is a pretty good one and that's pretty typical right name email and the viewer could add some sort of comment to it so let's publish that And now if I come in and I refresh, there's the contact form on my contact page. So really quickly, I just go through them again. Home page is looking good. About me page looks good. 
resume looks good all of these sub pages look good and you know what I am feeling pretty confident that I can share this ePortfolio with potential employers and be really happy with what it is they are going to see. So I want to thank you for going through these Weebly uh, tutorials with me and I hope that you have been able to create an ePortfolio that you that you're going to share with the world and you know that is going to land you the the dream job that you've always wanted thank you